We're going to demonstrate an example of how to rank conformer stability when we have different cyclohexanes and they have methyl groups on them. All right, so let's begin by this little trick that I use to determine conformer stability. So you, what you could do is draw the chair conformation of every single molecule, but that's quite tedious. A, a trick that you can do to figure out something's equatorial and axial is number the, the carbon. So I'm going to number these as 1 through 6. And here's the trick. If it's an odd number and then they're both up, then they're either both equatorial or both axial. If it's even numbers, then if they're both up, then they're either both equatorial or axial. So that means if you also switch between an odd number and even number, that means if they both want to be equatorial, one has to be up and one has to be down, or one has to be down and one has to be up. If they're both up, then it's one or the other. So basically, odd numbers, if they're cis, then they're all equatorial or axial. And then if it's even numbers, if they're cis, then they're all equatorial or all axial. So based on that trick, we're going to ignore number 5 and 2, and we're just going to look at these numbers right here. So we're going to do the same thing for everything else to make this process faster. And we're going to be able to figure out which is the stable conformers without having to draw the, the chair conformation for every single one. Now, starting with this one. Right here, we have a tert butyl group. If you have a carbon connected to T3-methyls, that's a tert butyl group. That always has to be equatorial. So we're just going to label this as equatorial. Now, this can never be axial, so we have to just uh, instantly assume it's equatorial. Now, this is number one. Going to number three, since this is trans and they're both odd numbers, that means this is axial. Now, three and four, odd number to even number, and they're trans, so that means they're, this one is also axial. And since even numbers and they're both cis, then they're also axial. So we only have one equatorial there. Now, let's assume uh, carbon number one is equatorial because we'd like to have equatorials for stability. The number three is also equatorial because it's cis. Number four is axial because it's also cis, but it's an odd to even number. And then even to even, that means this one's also axial. Now for number one here, let's assume this is equatorial. Odd number is cis, so it's equatorial. Sw it's odd to even, but it's trans, so this is also equatorial. Even to even, and cis, so it's also equatorial. So we have all equatorials there. Then let's assume this one's equatorial in carbon number one. Odd number and it's trans, so this is axial. Change of uh, odd to even, but it's also trans, so that means this is also axial. And then even to even, but it's trans, so this is equatorial. Now let's assume number one here is equatorial. Then we'll have three is axial, because it's odd number and trans. Odd to even, but it's cis, so it's equatorial. And then even to even, also cis, equatorial. Now, Let's figure out how many equatorials we have. So on this one, we only have one equatorial. In this one, we have two. In this one, we have four. In this one, we have two. And this one, we have three. So we're going to rank this based on how many, on the most amount of equatorial groups. So that would make this rank one. This would make this rank two and this is rank five. For one through five is the most stable to least stable. Now, what about these two right here? So what's the difference between these two? What makes one more stable than the other? Now let's, I wanna point something out. Here we have axial group over here and an axial group over here. And then we have an axial group over here and an axial group over here. What makes one more stable than the other? Now. If we have two axials next to each other, one's up and one's down, one's basically pointing up and the other's pointing down. If we're thinking about steric hindrance, which is basically having two molecule groups base being really close to each other, when two molecule groups are close to each other, it's called steric hindrance because the electron clouds are overlapping and they don't want to do that. If one's pointing up, one's pointing down, there's less steric hindrance than one's, when one's pointing up and the other is pointing up they are closer this way than when they are basically pointing in opposite directions. So this actually is more stable because the diaxial groups are pointing in different directions. 
and this one is less stable because the diaxial groups are pointing in the same direction. So that makes it rank four. So if I circle this, we got five, four, we got one, we got two over here, and we got three. And that is how you rank conformer stability.